Hey guys, these are the solutions for M1 June 2017 at Excel. Question 1, so P equals to 5 over 2, Q is equal to minus 3 over 2, it's a very simple question. Question 2 is a collisions question, so I have drawn the diagram here. Uh, so velocity of 1 equals to minus 2 U meters per second. The speed of P is 2 U in opposite direction, or the directions are reversed. Uh, so I've written for part C. I've written the uh, moments momentum equation, which is m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2, and when you substitute the values, you get v2 equals to 3 u meters per second. Okay, so you can clearly see how I worked it out, and so impulse on Q equals i equals m bracket v minus u well you could write m v minus m u is the same thing so i substitute the values in always remember the initial speed is in the opposite direction so when you subtract it should be 3u minus minus u which makes it 4u and the total impulse is 12 mu newton seconds okay question three question three is a moments question so I drawn the diagram all the distances weights uh, reactions etc so for first part if you just saw vertically you got T plus 5 T equals to 75 G plus 30 G plus 75 G and you get T equals to 30 G which is 294 Newtons and if you take moments about a uh, so I've done all the clockwise forces which are 75 G times X 30 G times 3 um, 75 g times 2x equals to all the uh, the 5t reaction which is 4 meters away and when you work it out simplify it and solve it you get x equals to 510 over 225 and then that works out to be 2.27 meters okay so weight weight of uniform rod acts through center and rod has no width okay so it's obviously a straight line rod Okay, so that's question three. Question four. Again, I have written all the details and all the forces. Uh, in fact, I have even um, put the forces of vertical and horizontal components for the weight and the 10 Newton's force as shown. Okay, I mean, you don't have to do it, but it's clearer if you want to do it. So I'm kind of ignoring the weight and the 10 Newton's force as they are because I've broken them down already into the forces. So resolving vertically, we got R equals 5G cos alpha plus 10 sine alpha. Resolving horizontally, we got 5G sine alpha equals friction plus 10 cos alpha. Uh, you can write one force minus the other equal to zero, but you know since it's in equilibrium, you can just write uh, equals to zero. It's, it's the same thing. And so friction equals mu R, which is mu times 5G cos alpha plus 10 sine alpha. So you can see I've called equations 1 and 2 there. Uh, and if you sub equation 1 into 2, you get 5G sine alpha equals to mu bracket 5G cos alpha plus 10 sine alpha plus 10 cos alpha. Now you can simplify it directly from there. What I did instead is I divided everything by cos alpha. So when you do sine over cos, it becomes tan alpha. And wherever there's cos alpha, it cancels completely. You only do this if every single item has either sine or cos alpha. And you can clearly see there is. So basically, the first one becomes 5G tan alpha. And then 5G cos alpha becomes just 5G. 10 sine alpha becomes 10 tan alpha. And 10 cos alpha becomes 10. And then you just rearrange it. So you take the minus 10 to the other side and divide by this bracket. And mu equals to all that. And you can see in the corner there, sine alpha is 3 fifth, cos alpha is 4 fifth. And you just sub that in. Uh, obviously, tan alpha is 3 over 4. You sub that in and you get mu equals 0 0.473. Okay, question 5. So we have these two particles uh, uh, moving downwards. So I've done T minus 0 0.5 G equals 0.5a and then I got 15 minus sorry it's actually going upwards not downwards and I got um, 15 minus t minus 0.75 equals 
0.75 so this should be upwards actually okay should be going upwards so you solve the two equations and you add them so the t's cancel so you end up getting an equation in terms of acceleration only and if you simplify that down you get acceleration equal to 2.2 meters per second and then if you take particle a only so particle a has two forces acting thrust going upwards and the weight going downwards so t minus 0.5 g equals to 0.5 times 2.2 so t equals to 1.1 plus 0.5 g which is 6 newtons okay so that moves us to question 6 so acceleration is 0.8 meters per second and t at midpoint is 2.8 seconds question 7 so we need to work out the bearing. So if you work out this angle, which is uh, first of all tan theta, which is two over nine, and theta is twelve point five. So the bearing would be that plus the ninety, which is one hundred and three degrees. And these are very simple questions, guys. It's using I equals R naught plus V T. So for P, you sub those values in, and you get nine plus ninety I plus ten minus two T J. And for Q. Uh, 1 plus 40i plus 4 plus 80j. I mean, I'm sure if you write the first two equations, you'd still probably get the mark, so you don't have to simplify and con uh, combine the two i's and two j's together. So qp is p minus q, and then you just subtract those and you get this here. And then for part d, all you have to do is just square uh, p minus q and make it equal to 10 squared is around when you, when you square it you get quadratic and uh, when you s simplify the quadratic and solve it you get t equals to 0 or t equals to 0 0.32 seconds so that leads us to question 8 which is a system and you can see I've drawn all the forces etc so it's accelerating to the right and to the uh, downward vertical so for particle A, which is the particle on the surface, so I equals 2mg vertically, and horizontally T minus friction equals to 2ma, because we're accelerating that way, and that is T minus mu R equals to 2ma, so T minus 2ma equals to mu R. Now for B, mg minus T equals to ma, so mg minus ma equals to T, so what I did is I substitute that T into this equation, to the first, second one, uh, and uh, we get acceleration equals to g over 3 1 minus 2 mu equals to acceleration okay so read carefully I know this one is a bit of a complicated question so now for B from initial rest acceleration is what we just worked out uh, distance is h the final velocity works out to be square root of 2 g over 3 1 minus 2 g, 2 2 mu times h meters per second so after B reaches ground for A, so the force diagram, the forces are only these forces now, there's no tension. So we've got a reaction, 2mg minus friction. Now some people might not draw a different diagram, but I like to draw it because obviously forces have changed, there is no tension, so it's better to draw this object. So 2ma equals to minus friction, because minus friction is the only force acting on it. And vertically R equals to mg. Now 2ma equals to minus mu R. So 2m equals to minus mu 2mg, so the 2m, 2m cancels, so acceleration equals minus mu g, so mu is equal to one third, so acceleration equals minus one third g meters per second squared. Now if you, so, so the initial u for part, uh, particle a, will be this now, because you put the mu value in, that gives you square root of 2g over 9h, so it, so now if you work the moment after particle B has hit the ground, so initial velocity is square root of 2g over 9h, final velocity is 0, the stopping uh, position, acceleration is minus g over 3, and then you use the same equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2s, and if you rearrange it, just v squared minus u squared over 2a equal to s, substitute the values and you get s equals to h over 3. So the total distance is h plus h over 3, which is 4 over 3 h meters. So if mu is equal to half, the velocity at impact becomes zero because when you put half into the equation of the velocity, uh, you get one minus two bracket 
half in the middle there in the bracket so that makes it zero so the particle a is stationary if mu is half okay thank you